The objective of this video is to talk through how to complete the chi-square test association in JASP. Firstly, I want to start by explaining how you would enter the data, and then we will go through what buttons we would press within JASP to get our output. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see the data I've been using for my first year module, where I've been teaching chi-squares test association. We have the two pitch lengths, 20 yards and 17 yards, and the methods of dismissal. These data, or the observed values, are shown in a simple contingency table. Setting your data up like this is a good way of presenting it in a report, however that will not work for setting it up within JASP. What you must do is open an Excel file, and then enter the data as shown on the right hand side of the screen. You need to set up three columns. One column for each independent variable, so I have pitch length and then I have dismissal and then a third column that includes the frequencies. These are the three variables that are tested within Chi-Square's test of association. Now you'll notice that I have 20 yard pitch listed out five times. I have to do that for each method of dismissal in order for the software to understand that we are connecting those two variables together. You will then also see that I have the two methods dismissal listed out twice. That's because I have two pitch lengths. Once you set your data out as indicated on the right hand side, what you must do is save this file. And I'm going to click to save as to give myself all of the options. Choose whatever you wish to save it as, but what you must select is CSV file. Now, if you hit the drop down menu, you'll see your normal Excel files. What you must do is select CSV UTF-8 comma delimited. This is the software uh, version that is works best with JASP. Once it is saved, you will now be able to open this data file up in your JASP files. So I've now opened JASP. On my home computer, I'm currently running JASP 17.1. The computers on campus are currently running JASP 16.4. I've not found any differences between them in terms of what they can and cannot do. So what I need to do is, first of all, I need to open my file up. So I'm going to go to the three bars here, go to open and then computer, and then go and search for where you've saved files. Now here's my file cricket length for JASP that I've just saved. I click on open and it will import the data for me automatically. So I'm just going to see exactly what I've got here. So I've got my two variables listed in and my frequencies. In order to complete chi-squares test of association, that is found within the frequencies menu and we're looking to create a contingency table. A new window will pop up once we've selected our test. I'm gonna try and replicate the contingency table from the original data as that just makes it easier for me to understand what I've done. Pitch length was part of the rows dismissals go into the columns and you can see the tables being built on the right hand side of the screen and I finally move the frequencies into the counts. I can use the arrows to maximize the output screen or I can see the data view. So you can see I've got the original contingency table that I showed you at the start of this video and automatically chi-squares test of association has been calculated below. Now I will want to add some more options here because I'll want descriptive statistics and I'll want more information as I'm going forwards about how to interpret chi-squares test association. So I'm going to go back into the menus here. Within the list we have some information down here for statistics, so I'm going to select that option and just scroll so you can see all the options I have available to me. Now if I have a 2 by 2 chi square test, where my independent variables both have two conditions, I may choose to add the contingency, con uh, the continuity correction. But because I have a two by five, that is not appropriate. I will want chi-squares effect size statistic, and I'm gonna choose this option here, and you can see this nominal table has now been added. The Kramer's V is the appropriate test statistic for a two by five contingency table. I'm going to close the statistics menu and then I'm going to go into the cells menu where again more options are available to me. 
Now, the descriptive statistic come from this percentages row. So I'm going to select all of those options. And as you can see, the right hand table is now much, much larger and populated with more information. These statistics are really useful for me to be able to interpret and describe what is going on with my two independent variables. Now, the choice of whether we have the row or the column or use the total in terms of interpreting the information will be based upon the context of your data. As a reminder, my strategy is to work broad to narrow by looking at the totals within the column and the, uh, sorry, the totals of the row on the right hand side here or the totals within the column down here. Now, there are other options I would select, now, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to deselect the percentages just so I can add in the other options that I would want. I would want to see what the expected values are as that's part of the calculation. And then I might also want to see what the unstandardized residuals are. These are the differences between the observed and the expected values. So you can see the difference between 165 and 155 is 9.6. However, these unstandardized residuals have the problem of being affected by large sample sizes. So it is harder to compare the size of the residuals when the sample sizes between the columns are so much more different. This is why we would go about selecting the Pearson residuals. Now, JASP has made the decision to refer to these as Pearson residuals. Other pieces of software and other textbooks call themselves standardized residuals. For the purposes of my teaching, I will refer to them as Pearson standardized residuals. In the output screen, these Pearson standardized residuals have now been added in as an extra row. We use the criteria of 1.96 to determine whether these residual values are statistically significant. Now, as I go across all of my values, none of them have reached that threshold and therefore I'm unable to identify any significant differences between the observed and the expected values. My largest differences come in the runouts where I get close to 1.96. Now I'm just gonna go back to the cells here to add an extra layer of understanding. Jasper's included these standardized Pearson residuals. In other texts, you will find that they are referred to as adjusted standardized residuals. I would also refer to them as adjusted standardized residuals because that is what I'm familiar with from what I've been doing in terms of my readings around the chi-square statistics. These again offer the same sort of information as the Pearson standardized residuals and again can use the criteria of 1.96 to determine whether there are differences. Now the adjustment for the, standard, Pearson, the adjusted standardized residuals is again just for the number of uh, points within each column and the number of points within each row. I'm now finding a significant difference using the adjusted standardized residuals between my observed values and my expected values. Now, this is the second part of a table, and I don't mind whether you use Pearson residuals or standard or adjusted standardized residuals. That is a choice, but you must make sure you are clear about which one is being used and what the criteria that go with them because they do have subtle differences in terms of how you can interpret them. We have the chi-square statistic table here which includes the chi-square value and the associated probability value of the null hypothesis being true. And then we have the Kramer's V value down here which can be used to assess how strong the association is and that can be judged upon the number of conditions of the smallest variable and the number of conditions of the largest variable in relation to small, medium, and large. You'll be able to find out more information on that from Cohen's statistics. This is just an, a brief overview of how to use JASP's chi-square test, and you will be able to find more information on how to go about reporting it within your, my teaching on my first year module, iOS 4303. Thank you very much for your time.